It goes without saying, but Halo is a game series unlike any other. Many first-person shooters place a ridiculous amount of emphasis on weapon designs, how they look, sound, reload, and feel, while sometimes overlooking other aspects of their game's design language and sandbox. Halo was slightly different in that respect. While creating the first Halo game, the developers at Bungie seemed just as eager to showcase their shiny array of futuristic sci-fi weapons as they were with their vehicles. Halo has seen many iconic and varied vehicle designs over the years. The Covenant Arsenal is known for its smooth curved edges and glossy reflective surfaces with almost no obvious seams or edges, whereas the human faction in the series, the UNSC, are the polar opposite. Bolts, rivets, handlebars, and the evidence of their manufacturing process can be seen very clearly within their designs. Every angle is razor sharp, and their paint is chipped, scratched, and almost every UNSC vehicle in the series that you acquire has seen better days. And no vehicle exemplifies this design philosophy quite like the M808 main battle tank. Welcome to the first episode of a new series on the Leipaladen channel called Halo Revisited. And what better place to start than a mainstay vehicle that's been around even before day one, the Scorpion Tank. Hello there guys, gals, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Leipa Laden, and today we're doing something a little different. We're journeying back in time to look at the Scorpion tank. Within the Halo universe, it's a design that stood the test of time, seeing little changes over the years but has undergone quite the transformation under the hood in terms of its performance in game and functionality. So let's have a look at what makes this vehicle the most formidable in Halo sandbox and the undisputed king of the vehicle hierarchy. Before the idea of Halo as a first-person shooter had even crossed the minds of Bungie, it was a real-time strategy game, similar to Myth, another RTS game that the team had worked on years prior. In this build of Halo, there seems to be multiple versions of a human tank, all majorly influenced by designs of tanks from the current day, with the main cannon more squarely centred on the tank's frame, and the treads being underneath the main body of the tank, unlike how they'd eventually end up on future designs where they were separate from the main driving canopy. There are a few different iterations seen in this early build of the game, including one that looks closer to the design that we'd eventually get. In future versions of Halo, when it went from an RTS to third-person shooter, there were two different tanks, the first of which was the stealth tank, that was supposed to be more manoeuvrable than the standard Scorpion, and featured a much lower profile, a more conventional tank-like design that lacked the elongated neck of the Scorpion tank, and seemed to be quite far along in development. Not only would the whole tank shake while firing its cannon, but plumes of smoke would come out of the two rear vents as well. In this build, however, we also saw the first variation of the Scorpion tank that bears a striking resemblance to how it would eventually look in the final game. The Scorpion tank is teased briefly in Combat Evolved's campaign during the first cutscene and becomes playable a few missions later. It's used quite sparingly, only being drivable in Assault on the Control Room. In the lore, the Scorpion tank is an affordable, mass-produced design that has seen use among humanity's military for several hundred years, and features a complex human-computer interface system that allows for one driver, namely a Spartan or a Marine with a neural interface, to operate the entire machine, controlling its movement, firing off the weapon, etc. all at once, as opposed to the standard crew of at least four needed to operate a tank nowadays. The driver is aided by a series of different cameras and sensors held within a housing for the main cannon that fires a 90mm tungsten round. On this version of the Scorpion tank, specifically the M808B, there's a side-mounted coaxial machine gun that the player can fire with their left trigger and comes in particularly handy while waiting for the main cannon to reset, as there's a noticeable 4 second delay between shots. The reticle on the Scorpion is also quite large in this game, which is fair as the spread of the main cannon's fire is a little wilder than it would be in future games. If you're outside of red reticle range with the Scorpion, there's a decent chance you'll miss your target because of this, meaning you have to get nice and close to a target to achieve an accurate hit. The name Scorpion is obviously in reference to the design of the tank, with two large front treads looking like the pincers of a Scorpion and the cannon at the back being the stinger. 
The Scorpion features a kind of light grey colour scheme with hints of brown, with what appears to be replacement pieces of tread bolted to the exterior near the driver's canopy and below the neck of the tank, meaning that in the event of a tread on one of the track pods being damaged, it can be replaced or it's just a reused texture, who knows. The Scorpion also features room for four passengers who can sit along the track pods, just make sure to not get your shoelace stuck in there or you'll lose a leg, and features the birth date of art director Marcus Lato stamped on the front of the tank. Nice, that's, that's wholesome. In multiplayer, the Scorpion is a formidable vehicle and is perfect for dealing with enemy warthogs, ghosts, and even banshees. However, because of Combat Evolved's vehicle mechanics, the Scorpion tank is a relatively weak vehicle and leaves the occupant vulnerable due to the canopy that sits above the driver being virtually useless. One good shot from a sniper rifle can take a driver out, and consistent fire from the god gun, I mean the, um, the, the, uh, the magnum, can drain the shields and health of the driver very quickly. Explosive weapons like the rocket launcher and fuel rod cannon are also effective, though if you're getting that close to be able to use one against a scorpion, you're probably already dead. While the scorpion in Combat Evolved is a little tricky to navigate at times due to its controls for aiming and movement being tied together, and it's not seen often in the campaign or in multiplayer maps for that matter, it definitely made its mark, and it was only looking up for our favourite armoured beast. Halo 2 was bigger, bolder, and more badass than its predecessor, taking what many fans loved of the original game and dialing it up to 11, while refining what previously worked. One such example of something that saw significant refinement was the Scorpion. In Halo 2's campaign, the Scorpion is first used in the opening moments of the mission Metropolis, getting dropped off by Sergeant Avery J. Johnson himself before rolling on through the Covenant defenses and wiping out any inhuman, inhuman son, son of a, a bitch, bitch dumb enough to get between him and the Prophet of Regret. Pull yourself together, because you're going with it. It later appears in Delta Halo as an optional replacement for your Warthog, and again towards the start of Quarantine Zone, where you can find a disregarded one that a Flood Combat form will board in case you don't get to it first. <sighs> yeah, as if the Flood weren't scary enough already, they can drive tanks. Great, thanks for the nightmare fuel, Bungie. In game, it functions very differently to Combat Evolved, having only a two second cooldown timer on its main cannon, and a much smaller and thus more accurate crosshair that seems to have an upped level of magnetism for targets as well. The cannon on Halo 2 Scorpion does feel noticeably less powerful compared to CE's. The sound of the cannon is tamer, and the huge amounts of dust and debris that were shot into the air whenever a tank shell hit its target and exploded is missing here. However, the trade-off is that it's more intuitive and simpler to maneuver, and carries over the side-mounted driver-operated machine gun. The Scorpion features a different design to Combat Evolved, with better textures and detailing that show all the bolts and screws that help to hold this metal beast together. The external pieces of tank tread are still present in this design too, and it's gotten a paint job, going from the dark grey-brown colour of CE to an olive green shade more reminiscent of other UNSC vehicles like the Warthog. In multiplayer, you unfortunately can't board the track pods like you could in CE, though AI allies can in campaign, and it's a very daunting challenge to take one of these out. Due to its increased fire rate and its better accuracy at range, there's much less room for error in defeating a Scorpion tank in Halo 2. Different to CE, once again, there is a vehicle damage mechanic as well that shows the health of the vehicle, but in a different way. When the Scorpion obtains damage, it starts off with a bit of smoke, maybe the odd electrical crackling, maybe a few bits of armor pop off, and then... It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Ah! With the release of the Xbox 360, what was once unthinkable in terms of graphic fidelity and detail suddenly became a reality. Halo 3 was the first Halo game to be made with high definition in mind, with the game running at... Ah, wasn't 720p, it was 640, so kind of not really high definition. Regardless, the game still looks incredible. The Scorpion tank in Halo 3 shares many parallels to its Halo 2 predecessor, despite being a different build, changing from the M808B that we had seen up until this point to the standard M808. The rate of fire and sound effects are very similar, with comparable maneuverability and levels of health too. Like Halo 2, the vehicular damage mechanic is present, and those little tank treads on the exterior? Still got them. The design was given more detail, with a small ladder leading up to the driver's canopy, handlebars for the brave soldiers who want to sit on the track pods, and on other parts of the tank, presumably making it easier to access portions of the Scorpion to perform maintenance. 
There are also these little bits of rope that hang from the track pods, likely there to help with hanging supplies off the tank for long journeys, or could be used as an improvised winch in case the tank needs to tow or be towed by another vehicle. The biggest change however isn't the change of colour to a browner shade instead of green, but the removal of the side mounted machine gun, instead being swapped for a separate gun emplacement that can be used by a second operator. Not only does this help negate the chances of being boarded from the front, but it also allows the Scorpion tank to fire in two different directions at once, with the main cannon focusing on one target while the machine gun can aim elsewhere. The same version of the Scorpion tank was used in Halo 3 ODST, with the same model and functions almost identically. It appears in the mission's Kazingo Boulevard, driven by Alpha 9's resident explosives expert, Mickey, and again in the final level of the campaign, Coastal Highway, while defending Oni Agent Dare and a defecting Covenant engineer. In Halo 3's multiplayer, the Scorpion tank is just as fun as it ever was, though it tends to be used in a more defensive manner than previous games, primarily because of this guy. The Spartan laser, along with other anti-vehicle weapons and equipment like the missile pod and power drain, make the Scorpion... well, there's no easy way of putting this, but a great big and slow easy double kill in the hands of a Splazer user. One good shot towards the canopy of the Scorpion, and you've got yourself a charcoal grill that smells of burning rubber and Splazer hater tears. It's because of this reason that it's preferable to play defensively with the Scorpion tank, picking off targets from afar and only moving up when you know for certain that the guy with the Spartan laser has used all five of his shots. It's for this reason that the Scorpion generally gets overshadowed by other vehicles in the game, like the Gauss Hog. It's quicker and thus harder to track with a weapon, the gun fires faster and more accurately, and they tend to spawn on just about every bloody game of Team Heavies. Halo 3 was also the first Halo game to have a variant of the vehicle in the form of the Arctic Scorpion. Depending on the version of the map, the Arctic Scorpion will spawn at both red and blue base on the map Avalanche, but otherwise functions the same. While the Scorpion is still a viable vehicle in Halo 3, it's unfortunately disrespected by the game's sandbox, but that doesn't stop it from being a menace when in the hands of an experienced driver. Halo Reach aspired to take the Halo series back to its roots, serving as a prequel to Combat Evolved and thus taking a lot of design cues from it as well. The Scorpion was no exception, returning to a darker colour scheme closer resembling its appearance in Combat Evolved, having a slightly slower fire rate, slower turning speed, and a noticeably louder and beefier feeling cannon, followed by the back of the cannon moving to eject a shell, spitting out the still smoking casing before slamming shut and getting ready for the next pull of the trigger. It's easily the most satisfying Scorpion to use in the series and feels heavy and explosive in a way that Halo 2 and 3 Scorpions didn't. The design is further stripped back, losing some of the visual clutter of Halo 3's Scorpion tank, like all the ladders, ropes and dump pouches, with a much cleaner and brutalist look that again is more reminiscent of its appearance in CE. The cannon itself and the platform it's situated in looks wider and bigger than Halos 2 and 3, almost comically so, and lacks the series of lenses and other sensors that were once a mainstay of the design. There's also this triangular pattern of vents on the back of the shell ejector that almost feels reminiscent of the design language of the battle rifle and DMR's triangular indentations. Its first and only playable appearance in campaign is in the mission The Package, where after infiltrating Covenant ground forces situated around Oni Sword Base, Noble Six and a group of ODSTs stumble across a coincidentally perfect intact Scorpion just ready and waiting to cause some havoc to those Covenant AA guns. Like Halo 3, however, the Scorpion tank is a little underwhelming, now being vulnerable to the human sniper rifle which does a lot of vehicle damage in this game. The driver canopy can also be shot off by an accurate marksman, leaving the Spartan inside vulnerable to small arms fire. If you're really unlucky though, the Scorpion's cannon can be shot clean off by heavy weapons like the Spartan laser, leaving you defenseless except for the chain gunner position. Reacher Scorpion tank is a step forward in some respects, especially in terms of aesthetics, serving as the basis for many designs in the future, and is arguably the most recognisable in the series, while also being a few steps back in terms of its performance in-game once again. 343 Industries had no easy job following in Bungie's footsteps, and their first title in the Halo series, Halo 4, was controversial to say the least, and the Scorpion tank was not exempt from this. 
with a massive change in art style that saw characters, weapons, and the whole aesthetic for the series' factions almost completely changed, the Scorpion, design-wise at least, remains relatively untouched, still rocking a similar look to Halo Reach's design with the triangular vents on the back of the main cannon, the mounted secondary machine gun, the dark greeny-grey kind of colour scheme, and white painted details are all the same. But functionally, it was the biggest departure we've seen to the Scorpion yet since Halo CE to 2. The shots now arced in Halo 4, meaning the long-range dependency of the vehicle was slightly reduced. You'd now have to aim higher than usual to hit a target at a distance, which also explains the change in crosshair that features vertically descending brackets to try and give the driver a rough estimate and how much higher they have to aim. Its firing sound though is quite different to previous renditions, emphasizing the whistle of the shell as it travels through the air, the main boom sound coming from the eventual impact of the shell and the metal clang of the ejector port loading up the next round, instead of the immediate loud bang of Bungie's games. Its first appearance in campaign is during the latter half of the mission Infinity, where Master Chief, along with other Spartan 4s, push through a Covenant defensive perimeter to get aboard the grounded UNSC Infinity, where it's quickly outshone by the newer and arguably more interesting UNSC mech, the Mantis. In multiplayer, the Scorpion isn't seen all that much, but like the Reach version it's based off, feels satisfying to use, albeit maybe a bit weak. Halo 4 also suffers from an influx of new power weapons, most notably the Promethean Incineration Cannon that can one-shot the Scorpion tank in addition to the Spartan Laser, the Rocket Launcher, Fuel Rod Cannon, Sticky Detonator, and of course the Sniper Rifle, which holds onto its vehicle killing capabilities from Reach. The slower rate of fire and having to arc your shots isn't inherently a bad idea. It adds a little more thought to using the vehicle than just point and shoot in the general vicinity of someone and they're bound to die. But with its already minimal health and Halo 4's heavy emphasis on powerful vehicle killing weapons, it's a risky choice to want to take this over just trying your luck with an ordnance drop. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary is a contentious game among the Halo community as it reuses a lot of assets from Halo's Reach and 3. The Scorpion tank is indeed one such reused asset that kind of misses the mark. Instead of the canopy sliding shut like it does in Reach, in CEA it sticks open like a trapdoor, but doesn't really make a lot of sense as to how it can do this. The gunner position is gone, replaced with the coaxial machine gun that we all know and love from CE. Otherwise, it's not much to write home about. It's the Reach model with some new sound effects and a few changes on top of the Halo Combat Evolved Scorpion. In Halo 2 Anniversary, we once again saw a design very similar to Halo Reach's, but repainted to better match the olive green colour of Halo 2's original Scorpion. There's notably quite a difference in the Scorpion's look from cutscene to gameplay, however. In this render by Blur Studios, the company behind Halo 2 Anniversary's pre-rendered cutscenes, you can see what looks like a bit of fabric covering the base of the cannon, along with two small targeting screens Screens that reminded me a lot of the green eyepiece seen on the helmets worn by Marines in Combat Evolved and Reach. The cannon is super detailed and wider than previous versions, and it carries over the spirit of Halo 2's Scorpion design with all the bolts and rivets clearly visible along with other little intricacies. But when you hop into game, it unfortunately looks nothing like that and is just a slightly different Reach model. It makes the sound of the shell being ejected from the rear port of the cannon similar to Reach, but there's no animation for it. In Halo 2 Anniversary's multiplayer, which was based on the Halo 4 engine, the Scorpion tank is rarely seen as it's only present on the map Bloodline, a reimagining of coagulation. The Anniversary games are a bit of an oddment in Halo's history when it comes to the Scorpion tank, and things unfortunately didn't get much better from here either. Halo 5 Guardians sees the biggest departure in terms of design to the Scorpion tank yet. If Halo 4 started 343's trend of redesigns, Halo 5 is what their vision of the Halo universe was ultimately supposed to look like. And in the case of the Scorpion tank, I think it's for the worse. In the lore, this is a post-war version of the Scorpion, developed in the year 2557, called the M820, and supposedly has the same firepower and agility of the original Scorpion, but only half the weight. I know there are some fans of this design, and I can see why. The Scorpion is practically... not very sensical. 
I've linked a video to Spookston who explains why, from a real-world perspective, the Scorpion just makes no sense. Halo 5 Scorpion almost feels like it aims to address some of those points and takes the bungee design philosophy of sharp angles and simplistic retro future looks to smooth edges and a ton of detail that makes this design look very busy and reminds me more of an M1A2 Abrams of the modern day than the sharp, aggressive looking battle tank of the future. And upon doing some further research, real-world modern-day tanks seem to have served as inspiration for this redesign. It's a common problem with Halo 5's aesthetic. Scrapping something that, while not practical in a real-world sense, is a recognisable and exclusive design that set Halo apart from its many competitors. And in 2015, when Halo 5 came out, there were a lot of competitors in the sci-fi shooter space. The rough silhouette of the Scorpion tank is still kinda there. The four track pods, the massive elongated cannon, the secondary turret. However, the cannon now resides further to the front of the Scorpion than right at the back like it formerly was, and lacks the notable neck of the Scorpion tank, with the used shell after firing being ejected from the top of the cannon rather than being removed from the back. Instead of the whole cover surrounding the cannon moving up and down while aiming, the cannon itself is situated on its own smaller axis, and despite in the lore firing a larger 150mm round compared to the previous M808 series that typically fired 90mm, the explosion is noticeably less big, shall we say. It kind of undercuts the whole reason it's called the Scorpion in the first place without that neck section. As its own design, I think it's pretty neat and could have made for a great modern interpretation of the pre-release Halo CE stealth tank, for example, but as a replacement design for one of Halo's most iconic vehicles? Nah, not it, Chief. The Scorpion tank is seen first in the campaign mission Glast, where Spartan Locke and other members of Fireteam Osiris commandeer a Scorpion tank owned by the private mining corporation Liang Dortmund. Functionally, it's very similar to Halo 4 Scorpion tank with similar firing sounds, the same crosshair, and the need to arc your shots. Halo 5 also featured new Scorpion variants in the Warzone game mode. Those included the Tundra, Woodland, and Urban Scorpion that function more or less the same as the standard Scorpion tank. The Oni Scorpion with a cool black and red color scheme, a faster projectile speed for the tank cannon, and improved armor. There was also the Hannibal Scorpion, which... <laughs> if there's one thing that I'll give Halo 5, it's this. This version of the Scorpion tank features a prototype directed energy weapon, like the Spartan laser, and its mounted machine gun is replaced with a small gauss cannon. In multiplayer overall, vehicles don't have much of a place in Halo 5's sandbox. Because of all the abilities given to the Spartan players, vehicles feel noticeably slower and less viable when compared to the speed of the Spartan 4s in this game, which is likely the reason we didn't have a big team battle game mode till several months after launch. In Warzone, given how many other cracked out weapon and vehicle variants there are, it's not a lot of people's first choice. If there's one thing 343 learnt in the wake of Halo 5, it's that reception to the changes in art style specifically were mostly negative, and moving forward with their next entry in the series, they knew they'd have to make some serious course corrections. Halo Infinite took the series back to a design language that was more closely synonymous with what many have come to expect from Halo. The sharp angles and simplistic designs of the Bungie era games are featured more prominently in the designs for the Spartans, their weapons, and of course the vehicles as well. The Scorpion tank is a step back from Halo 5's, but in all the right ways, returning to a more familiar model that closely resembles the look and functionality of Halo Reach's Scorpion tank, and in the lore is supposed to be one of the older M808 series. The mounted machine gun returns once again, and the seat for the operator is noticeably deeper than previous games, which makes the Spartan gunner look like he kinda needs a booster chair or something. There's more protection for the gunner, however, with additional metal plating on either side of the gun. The Scorpion has an olive green color, reminiscent of Halo 2's, with red paint for other minor details. Funnily enough, it seems to have exposed treads within the track pods, which I guess is what makes it so that friendly AI or other players can't sit on them like previous games, which is kind of unfortunate. The sound design of the Scorpion is different to Halos 4 and 5, once again putting an emphasis on the initial boom that comes from the main cannon, with a more subdued metallic clang for the shell ejector. There's a roughly 3 second cooldown between shots, but the arcing projectiles from Halos 4 and 5, 
that's been removed or at least drastically reduced. It's quite slow to turn compared to previous versions, but its top speed does feel faster. In the campaign, the Scorpion tank can be called in via a UNSC forward operating base once the player reaches enough Fowler from completing missions, but some notable inclusions are during the optional mission Ransom Keep, where a Scorpion tank can be found in a banished garage, being slowly dismantled for scraps, and later in the campaign during The Road, where a Scorpion can be acquired during the final push on the House of Reckoning. In multiplayer, the Scorpion is back to where it once was, proving itself as a strong and dependable choice in the game's big team battle game mode, providing excellent support from a distance to Spartan ground forces when pushing an objective or holding a line and defending your team's base. Versing the Skewer, Halo Infinite's resident anti-vehicle weapon, the Scorpion can take a very considerable beating. Boarding the Scorpion tank will now require two grenades to destroy the vehicle and quite a few extra melees. With Halo Infinite's status as a live service game for the next 10 years, there's no telling what new weapons might be added to the sandbox in future updates and thus could negatively impact the Scorpion's place. But if there's one thing that the last 20 years has told us is that a Scorpion tank is really only as good as the sandbox it's placed in. While the Warthog might be the Halo series' most beloved child, the Scorpion tank holds a place in many players' hearts as their personal favourite vehicle. Whether it was the tool that helped you get a crazy kill streak, or the hammer that hit the final nail in the Covenant's coffin during the Battle for the Ark, the Scorpion tank, despite its many variations over the years, has always remained reliable in the face of extreme adversity, conquering the Covenant, Prometheans, and now the Banished. As, after all, Tank beats everything.